Ahoy hoy! You may be wondering, why does he have a pair of headphones on? Well, uh, today we are going to do a review of Mr. Clay's SCP short film, 096. Uh, this came out, I want to say, yesterday? Day before yesterday, maybe? Day before yesterday. And uh, there's been a lot of buzz about it. I've watched it once. This is not a blind playthrough. Forgive the irony. Um, but I have some thoughts and I want to give those thoughts now. Uh, I also want to watch it again and make sure that I have, this is my second viewing. I want to make sure that I actually uh, still agree with my initial take, which is, by the way, I'm going to make this point right now. It is a very good video. And if you haven't watched it yet, you should. This is not a substitute for you going over to Mr. Clay's channel. The link will be in the description. In fact, it'll be at the top of the description, just so you don't miss it, uh, to go over to his channel and watch the video. I'm gonna have a smaller version of the video here for me to react to. Let's get started. I will say I was impressed very much. I was very impressed with the visual effects for this. I don't know what their budget was, but uh, it couldn't have been super high. Uh, Clay Abelli? Abel did a very, very good job with it. I think this is mostly... I mean, outside of the acting involved, obviously, uh, this is mostly his thing, so. And the two actors, James Fitzgerald and Stephanie Half, did a really very good job. I think this does a really good job of setting up the atmosphere we're going for here. I think there are a few negatives, though, to having something like this when okay so the thing is what's the target audience for this probably people who are already fans of fcp content right so then the idea is you don't have to explain a lot you can just show some pictures and people automatically will associate it with what they need to associate it with and 096 is so well known but i feel like there could be a little bit more done just a little bit to bring in people who aren't already fans of SCP content. This is a good transition, by the way. And I think the earlier scenes, like, they set the right tone if you already know what the SCP Foundation is. But if this is your very first video or very, very first interaction with it, maybe not the best. Again, very good. I'm just going to give you these little nitpicks here and there. I actually have somewhere around here a ID tag looks exactly like that that I picked off of, up off of Etsy and I wonder if they got it from the exact same place. It looks exactly like that actually. I like this guy. I'm gonna pause it right here uh, just so I can have a little bit of a discussion. Okay so this woman uh, is not being picked up by whatever microphones they have very well. I don't know if this was an intentional choice on their part or not. I wouldn't think so. Uh, but her volume is coming in much lower than I think it needs to be for this scene. Uh, added to that is the fact that I'm sure whatever direction she was given was something along the lines of remain professional but passive. Or not maybe not passive, probably not passive, but like unemotional, right? No emotion in this. This is entirely professional. Uh, and she does a good job with that, but her tone is lower, so she's quieter in the scene. And I think maybe that's why she's not getting picked up by the microphone properly. Uh, he seems to be getting picked up perfectly well. So, it's just a little, little uh, uh, nitpick. It's not a huge deal. Um, there are a couple of uh, areas where I probably will stop it and show you what I'm talking about a little bit more in detail. Um, I also, she's a great actress. She's doing a great job here. Probably not the, I'm not going to say, I mean, like, these are probably the best takes they had, but there's just something about her portrayal here that doesn't sit right with me. It just doesn't feel believable, for lack of a better way to put it. Dash one, dash alpha. I am here with Dr. Daniels. Hello, doctor. Have you caught it yet? Yes. Will you please 
Oh, thank God. We do have some questions. All right, we're going to talk about him in a little bit. But it's been very difficult to get a clear picture of the case. I hope you can help us. Yes, yes, of course. He comes in a little quiet too, actually. Good. Background noise is loud. I'm going to bet there was really no way they could fix this in post outside of doing ADR. And that's expensive. Bringing your actors back in, having them watch the somewhat finished product and say, okay, I need you to re-record your lines into this microphone uh, and we're going to put it over uh, the thing. And, it's, and this happens a lot. You'll see it in movies. Every once in a while, you, it's very noticeable, but done well, you don't notice it. In a couple places, I feel like they probably, they probably could have done that, uh, but it wouldn't have been worth the cost and effort to do it because it's throughout the entire scene. So this is a little quieter than it needs to be. Now, Doctor, for the record, where were... The room tone is really loud, and I kind of think it's intentional here. I think it's an intentional choice to make this seem like a, a workspace, but still. Where were you when containment was broken? I was on an excavation in the mountains, comparing lab samples with local geology. And in your absence, who was in charge of the lab? Dr. Alexi. And how was 096 being held? As per protocol, 096 is being kept in a class 13 containment no windows, no cameras, no one that is possible to see its face. Any instrumentation or life support system is in strict compliance. Thank you. When exactly was containment broken? You notice right there, I'll replay it again. Strict compliance. Listen to her. When exactly was containment broken? See how that went really, really quiet? You almost couldn't hear, I mean, if you crank up the volume, you can hear her fine, but you almost couldn't hear her there. That's, that's a problem. It's a tiny problem, but it's still a problem. Have you been informed of the exact time yet? He has less of a problem because most of the time he's leaned in and engaged with the scene. She's leaned back and she's talking in a more measured tone, which is the reason why like, the, the issue is not necessarily either actor. It's they're both doing what they're supposed to be doing here, but because she's supposed to be passive or at least unemotional and kind of lean back and, and like this, and he's leaned in and, you know, aggressive and like, oh, he's getting picked up by the microphone a little bit better often, but just right here where he leans back, you'll see, hear him get a lot quieter. Have you been informed of the exact time yet? Yes, of course. Apologies, Doctor. We're a bit disorganized ourselves. I also feel like maybe my, some of my earlier thoughts, my earlier thoughts was that she wasn't exactly doing a very good job here of like, she was doing a good job. Let's not put it that way, but it was, it could be better. She could have read the lines a little bit better. I think part of the problem is just, I can't hear her properly. I think she's putting just the right, she's doing it well. I just can't hear her as well as I can hear him. Right there. Really quiet. You must be more specific, Doctor. Oh, I'm going to stop mentioning... Us. Yes. I'm going to stop mentioning the sound problems, but they are... They're throughout the entire thing. I'm going to stop mentioning them, but they're not going to stop. I might, might pause it a couple more times on particularly bad areas. I think there's one towards the end of this scene that actually stuck out to me. to kill it. This could have been a catastrophe. Unfortunately, it's a bit too... Right there again. What do you mean? Unfortunately, it's a bit too late for could have been doctor. Unfortunately, it's a little too late for could have been this doctor. I, I, that, that part. It's, it's enhanced by the fact that they're now playing a little bit of music. The sound balance is off because the, they have to keep this... They, like I said, they have to keep what they have here. If they crank it up any higher, that background tone, that room noise, is going to overpower uh, anything they do. So they probably can't crank their volumes up anymore. What do you mean? Let's start from the beginning, shall we? <laughs> A little overacting there. Wouldn't have probably gone with that take if I could have avoided it. All right, now that we're done with that scene, uh, 
I think it was solid acting from both sides. Probably a couple places where it could have been better. Uh, I think their direction was probably pretty solid. Generally, you have to guess sort of on what the direction was because you never know. Maybe the actors just made a choice that worked. Um, well, we're moving now into a different scene, so we're going to go ahead and just completely change our focus here. Um, I will say, this is an adapted screenplay, for lack of a better way. This is, I mean, clearly it's an adapted screenplay, but it's almost directly adapted from a SCP-096 log. And, uh, the, the, I should say, lack of quality. It's not a bad, writtenly written thing, but it's on the SCP Wiki. It's not a badly written thing for the SCP Wiki, but the SCP Wiki's quality standards are not particularly high, especially with the earlier works. So, while it's good enough for the wiki, it's not really very good if you compare it to a professional work. And I feel like this is let down by trying to adapt something that is so media sorry, is so mediocre in the first place. Part of that's co contributing to a pacing problem in this. Uh, it's very slow. We haven't seen any real action at all, and we're almost five minutes into it. Okay, uh, this is researcher Michael Allen and researcher Daryl Landry reporting an event with 096. At approximately 1557, audio blips were picked up by sensors Alpha 1 and Alpha 2. One thing I'll tell you about voice acting, and I think the voice acting here is fine. Uh, when I do it, I, li I like to think unless the director tells you otherwise, or the voice director tells you otherwise, or uh, you're, you know, like the main character of a thing, your job is to basically remain unseen. And I know you're, you're a voice actor, of course your job is to remain unseen, but you shouldn't be noticeable. You're just there to help continue, like if you're doing a little, little bit like this, your job is not to be like, oh, I'm here, I'm doing it. Your job is to be as neutral as possible. You just go unseen, be unnoticeable, nothing special is happening. Just be a person in the scene, and that's it. And these people do a really good job of that. I think the Vulgan voice acts in this somewhere, and I haven't, the first time around, I didn't, I couldn't spot him in it, which is probably a good sign for uh, his ability. Well, it's the Vulgan, of course he's great. Also, I can't tell if this is computer animation or actual physical acting. I, it looks to me like it's computer animation. Uh, but I don't know for sure. First time around, I wasn't sure, and I'm still not sure. Stationary. You should uh, get Alexi down here. It should hold, right? Just get a hold of Alexi. That line right there, that line read. Would not have used that. Should... That right there. It should hold, right? Hold, right? Just get a hold of Alexi. That one's fine. Like, I'm being so nitpicky here. It should hold, right? See, that doesn't sound believable to me. I, I would have used a different line of reading. Here we go. Alright. It rapidly became clear that 096's target, which we've labeled 096-1, was nowhere close Now that she's leaning in, her voice is a lot easier to hear. In the event of a stage one breach, the automated protocols... The microphone is almost certainly sitting right above the middle of the table. I, I would bet they have, like, maybe one. They probably should have had two. One towards him and one towards her. I could be wrong. They, maybe they did have two. And if that's the case, they should have been positioned better. Ensure that a sleeping agent... The automated protocols failed to start. In the event of an automation failure, it would be up to the operations chief. In this case, Dr. Alexi. Well, where the hell was he? This is a dumb plot point. He was found hiding in the janitorial closet in Division 3. Dead. Damn. Little slight mispronunciation of janitorial there. Probably deserved a second take. I'll replay it for you. He was found hiding in the janitorial closet in Division 3. Does that get a little awkward there? Just a little. Dead. Okay. You know what? I'll wait until this plot point comes up again. I'm sorry for your loss, Doctor, but we do have a lot more to cover. After breaching the base, 
-096 moves in a straight vector towards the mountain. I particularly like this sequence, and what's interesting about it is that it's essentially all computer animated, or uh, I, I doubt very much of it's practical. Uh, but it still does a very good job with the SCP here. Big brother, this is Hog One approaching estimated target location. Over. Copy Hog One. Maintain vector. That's Volgan. Okay. That that maintain vector guy. That was Volgan. Okay. I, I spotted him finally. I think I've got something. Also, we're going to have to talk about the 096 scream at some point, but we're not. <laughs> it sounds right here. He sounds like uh, a screaming Jimmy Barnes from that video uh, where he's up in the sky going. Ah. <laughs> That's what he sounds like right here. Clear for strafing round over. Hear that? Clear for strafing round over. You're clear. This is very good. I really like the way this is done. And there's an, I think it's this part of the scene, except for that. First of all, that wasn't ineffective. Okay, two things. First of all. Ineffective on target. And second of all, it wasn't ineffective. You did slow him down. Maybe you should just keep doing that so that the SCP Foundation can get set up further downrange. You can see exactly which direction he's going. Just, you know, there's a high. Uh, you learn later there's a highway a little bit further down. Clear that highway. Make sure it stays clear. I'm just saying. Copy. Going hot on two Mavericks. Three, two, one. Fire. Not the best line read right there. The fire. Hold on. Two. Fire. Doesn't sound like it belongs in that scene. Amazing special effects. Also, you just slowed him down again. Now this part, I really like, okay? You're building up tension here on a creature, and if, if people know about it, which there's not enough, I don't think there's enough uh, setup to let you know exactly how this creature works. I think, well, maybe it is. I mean, you can't see his face. There's, there's a lot here and there that does a lot of, to show and no tell. Uh, I think they maybe could have done a better job with uh, with that a little early on, but for where it is, if you already know what 096 does, that look back right there. Direct hit. That look back right there really helps like sell the tension of this moment because not only is he looking back to see what happened, right? But there's a possibility he saw its face when he did that. Oh, thanks. He Again, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a fucking lie. <laughs> you slowed him down. And they're just like, all right, well, all we did was slow him down. That's not an effect? That sounds like an effect to me. See, they could have solved this problem. That line for when and not if but when probably should have had him redo that she's really quiet here which is fine if the if the microphone was picking her up better so I'm not entirely sure the way this character is being played, the word asshole works. It sticks out, right? He seems like a very upper crust kind of guy. Using the word asshole there it just doesn't work for me for this character. Also, pay attention. He knows he's being watched right now. This is important later. Okay, they're using... I'm almost sure... 
they're using the audio from the actual scene in the voiceover here. And with the additional noises, the voice and everything, I'm going to continuously talk about this because it's the biggest problem with this uh, movie. Uh, they should have probably just recorded regular voiceover for this. Like right there. I don't even know what she said. Lived on a small farm. What? I got nothing. And then there's that stupid fucking scream again, which undercuts all of the, all of the tension. This is a good scene too, by the way. a suggestion here and this is just from my own experience of what well not even experience this is just my own suggestion from like how I would do this um don't show him at all like at all like the above like really far above with the aircraft was good but you're dealing with a monster that can't be seen right well this is the issue though in order to for some of this plot to work you have to see you have to have him visually on screen but there, we'll get to that later. Although you don't need to. There are other ways you could work your way around that by showing like a picture of him being completely scr completely scrambled. Not just his face, but completely scrambled on the scramble gear. I think if you'd done it that way and not shown his physical form, this would have had a lot more attention to it. But once you see him and also hear that stupid fucking scream, no offense, uh, it, it, it loses a lot of the tension. What is the point of this interview is what I really want to know. Like, what story point does it drive home? Alien solution to a very complicated problem. Expensive too. Cheap and inconsequential. Eh. I want to go into detail about why I don't like that, but I don't really think it's it's kind of a nitpick. Like her delivery of that, everything about that I didn't like. The writing, the delivery, his response to it worked pretty good, I guess. So that's not everything. Uh, and then just uh, let's move on. Here's the problem. They're having her portray someone who is cold and uh, emotionless here. But every once in a while, she has emotion come through in what she says. But she doesn't actually change her tone of voice, which is... I would think it'd be a directing thing. So, I, I mean, but it's... Again, these above shots are really good. And again, the scramble gear, if I said... If, if they changed it so it didn't just cover the face, but covered the whole body, then it would be quite an interesting thing, I think. And to be fair, nothing about this really tells you... That's That's the other thing. Uh, not, if you don't know 096 already, then you don't know why it just scrambles the face and not the whole body, or why the guy that saw it running across the thing isn't you know is wasn't uh, killed. Probably could have shifted the scramble gear stuff earlier, because you do see scramble gear in. Uh, no, no, you don't. I don't think you do anyway. But you could have put scramble gear on those first two guys that died. Just as like a precautionary measure. And then had it fail for them. Mm. Well, this does move pretty fast, though. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm like on the fly trying to think of how to fix this plot. I just <laughs> there's there's some work that needs to be done to it. Copy. But I don't Marker think placed. I have the solution Proceed in my mind. Copy. Marker placed. Proceed with bagging. Yeah, that's definitely the Vulcan. I keep saying I'm going to stop talking about the sound, but god damn it, it keeps coming up. It ruins the scene. It doesn't ruin the scene. I think this is a very well done thing. And for the uh, budget that they had, ADR wasn't probably an option, and redoing this whole scene probably wasn't an option. The day after, and they were like, oh, this sound is not as good as I'd like it to be. This has been scratched out by hand. By who? How? 
scramble goggles proved to be somewhat useful after all. Bad. Okay. There are a few places here where you could tighten this up. Take out parts to make the pacing better. This is one of them. This has been scratched out by hand. Who did this? Cut over to the thing happening. Not tell me what's about to happen and then show me the thing that happened. Scramble goggles proved to be somewhat useful after all. That's a little too clever by half. That's the thing where you're like, I'm going to, uh huh. I, I can't get you. And it's, it's one of those things that's like, I can't give up this line, right? You think you get this? Parts has been scratched out by hand. By who? How? Your scramble goggles proved to be somewhat useful after all. Yeah, that's one of those lines where you're like, you write it and you're like, oh, I've got to leave this in. You shouldn't have left that in. Change the way he reads his who, how part to be a little bit more final, then just go to this. Although, I think this is actually paced poorly too. I think you could do a better job with it. Maybe, I don't know. You could probably start right here. Everything before this, all the way up to that line I mentioned, could be gone. Maybe so you'd have to uh, you'd have to set up that scene there part up where he's putting the bag on a little bit better, but that's about it. He said it. He said the thing. My condolences to you for the loss of your colleagues. Remember. He knows he's being watched. He knows he's still on camera. He knows all of that. And yet... Sorry, it's just a little writing thing that bothered me. Also, can I make a point here? Alexei being dead or not dead, this reveal here at the end, which, by the way, Spoiler alert. Uh, it doesn't do anything. He's smart. I'll give him that. Yeah. Are the O5 still online? Is he? Because he just admitted to basically that he had done something deliberately. If they were even slightly suspicious, which they are. This part. All those initial discrepancies are damning enough. Get what we can out of him. Then he's to be terminated. Quickly. I can only guess that this is supposed to be like a sequel hook. Because this is like a huge plot point to drop at the end of your thing. That doesn't go anywhere and doesn't mean anything. Either that it was included as part of like an earlier draft. And it was just kind of left in because they liked it. And it still seemed kind of clever because it's a twist. But it's a twist with no setup. That means nothing. So. Remember, he's officially already dead. He's smart. When do we inform Daniels that we know he orchestrated the breach? Only after he kills it. And that's the thing. We'll let the credits play through. They're not too long, and you should be able to see who did all this work. Jesse Dartry. There's the Vulcan. Hold on, who adapted the screenplay? Yeah, Dr. Dan. I don't blame them for the writing on this. I think the, uh, I think the original work was so uh, inferior of a product. It's not anyone's fault that the adaption would be less than like as the writing was a little bit subpar for it. You gotta work with what you got, I guess. People know it. How did my Kickstarter? How much was the Kickstarter for this, actually? Hold on, this is a... Uh, okay, this is just Kickstarter stuff. A Dark Math production. How much was it, actually? 20000 Hmm. That's pretty good for a small film, actually. Anyway, uh, the actors were great for this. The story was as good as I think it could have been, considering the source material. Um, 
just in general, I was, uh, I was, I, I think this is the future right here. This kind of stuff. Kickstarted small films like this that done by people like Mr. Clay, who are incredibly talented using people from the community, using people that they know who are out of the side of the community to make something amazing, like just, just amazing in general. Let's take these off. But as for my video, let's go ahead and end it here. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't seen this on your own, please go over to, to uh, Mr. Clay's channel and watch it there. Um, it is, uh, like I said, it's the future of SCP content, I think. Small little films like this, maybe one day building up to something a bit bigger. Maybe, maybe a couple million dollars will get thrown at a uh, fan film at some point to be run by uh, semi-professional or indie filmmakers. And we'll get something really like a full length film that's high quality. Um, because if we can create, if they can create a 20 minute film that's like that, then you know, the sky's the limit, especially on $20,000. Thank you very much for watching. Scroll down and hit the subscribe button for me. And while you're over watching the thing, the thing on Dr. Clay's channel, subscribe to him. He's got lots of cool stuff. Then head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash DeSumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has. Hold on real quick. We'll load up that here on Patreon and we'll take a look and see. Well, I've got new uh, $40 backers, I believe. Let's take a look here. So I have a new backer called probably a wizard and definitely not a scientist who has pledged $40 along with Manuel Noltorp, as always, who has pledged $40 per month to support this channel. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much. It's actually really cool. $40 a month, uh, it's amazing to me that these people are willing to uh, help pay for the channel like this. It's just, God, it's such a stunning thing to know for sure, you know? <laughs> like, like you just, you, uh, these guys are my rock, you know? It's amazing. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and neither are you. And I'll see you all again on Tuesday.